Hey, Lucky's here. Hey, me, Matt. Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, and Luchasaurus taking on the jerk off of AEW, MJF, and Wardlaw. And we talked about this a long time ago about Sammy Callahan and MJF, and yeah, I still agree, one of the best. Heels in wrestling reminds me a lot of The Rock when The Rock was the Intercontinental Champion in a way. But I really think that Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy and even I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, yeah. Those two guys definitely are the shit. I don't know what to say though because it's an even match. Yeah, I mean, it should be a really interesting tag match. You've got, you know, the big hops of Wardlow. You've got the loudmouth, cocky, arrogant MJF. You've got the high flying and the also well technical ground base of Jungle Boy. Yeah. And then you have the unorthodox style of Luchasaurus. And you look back at their match last week with Wardlow and Luchasaurus. That was a great match. I, I think it was a lumberjack match. But yeah, you look back at the match last week on Dynamite with Luchasaurus and Warlow. That was a great match. Two big dudes beating the holy crap out of each other. And then you have Luchasaurus show his his athleticism by doing that back flip off the stage onto friggin MJF and Warlow and Jungle Boy and I think Marco was in there and a few others and it was like damn that was impressive it would be a really good match so this I think could be a very good tournament. match it would be very very interesting yeah It could be one of those things where somehow, some way, Wardlow and MJF get the win. Yeah. Be over Luchasaurus or Jungle Boy, one or the other, but there's going to be some way, probably, that they're going to win. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would love to see Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus win. You know, I think Jungle Boy is an awesome competitor. But, yeah, I tend to kind of agree with you on that. I think that somehow MJF and Orlo are going to win this match. Yeah. Now we go on to the World AEW Championship match. John Moxley versus Brian Cage with the Death, machine. the fucking machine. I am thrilled to see 
a new character development with his guy as having Taz as his mouthpiece. And I don't like Taz as a mouthpiece, usually. But, man, I mean, those two are really good together. And Cage is actually a beast. Like, more so, like, a beast than he was when he was on Impact. Yeah, I mean, you look at Brian Cage when he was in Impact. Yeah, he was the machine, and yeah, he beat up a lot of people, but it seemed to be that the machine was a gimmick. Yeah. Now, it's like, Brian Cage is the machine. He's this wrecking machine that destroys anything in his path, doesn't care who you are, what your background is in wrestling, how long you've been in wrestling, whatever. He will do whatever it takes to kick the living shit out of you. Oh, yeah. And you look at the parking lot brawl, if you will, that Cage and Moxley had there a few weeks ago where Taz confronted Moxley and then uh, Cage came up from behind and the two of them were just wailing at the crap out of each other. That was really, really good. Now, this is the match I was talking about. Because it's not a hundred percent sure whether or not Moxley will be on the card for Fighter Fest. I'm sure he most likely will, but it was well, you and I talked about this, Matt, I believe. There was a report put out, I guess, by one of the wrestling observers, I think it was, that Renee Young... Yeah, I made a video about that yesterday. ...has got the virus. And so, it, like I said, it's not 100% sure whether or not Moxley will be on the card to defend the title. He most likely will, but I think it's up in the air right now. I'm sure we'll find out more leading into Fighter Fest. Yeah. Because it's not that far away. The, the first night, I actually think the first night of it is tomorrow. And yeah. then the next night is the week later, on the 8th. Oh. I'll have to check that out. Nah. Shit. But yeah. Well, I'm sure Moxley will be on the card, and I feel like this match will or falls under the same category as Hagar and Cody, Thor and Cheetah. Yeah. I, like, don't get me wrong, Cage is a great wrestler. He's, like I said, this ass kicking machine. I don't give a shit about anything, just going in, beating the fuck out of you, and walking. <laughs> Alright, brace hell, leave. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this, him only being in AEW, such a short period of time, I don't see him getting the title from Moxley. I see, I could easily see Moxley retaining it. Uh... It'll be a hell of a fight for sure. Well, yeah, I see Moxley retaining. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to say the same thing. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on right now. And we'll find out eventually. I think Brian will get the title eventually, too, but I agree. I think that Moxley's going to win this match. So... Yeah, now we have a match here 
We've got freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy taking on Chris Jericho. <laughs> that was a good segment on Wednesday last. I mean, it really showed how aggressive Orange Cassidy can be. And see, that's the thing. Orange Cassidy is this character that's like, he's the cool guy that, you know, is easygoing and carefree and doesn't really care too much about anything. And, you know, you get him in the ring and, you know, he's a really good wrestler, but a lot of the things he does is an argument to his character very nonchalant, very I don't care, just goes with the flow, if you will. Then you look at last week and just how physical he got with Jericho, and it's a uh, adaptation of the character, like. As much as Orange Cassidy is this cool, calm, laid-back, chill dude, you pass him off, and he'll fight you. Yeah. So, that to me is really, really cool. Now, this match, if Cassidy can continue that really aggressive physical style, it should be a good match. I don't know, though, if Cassidy could get the win. Maybe, but... I'll be pleasantly surprised myself. I don't see that either. And, you know, Jericho being a veteran that he is, I can definitely see him going over. So, I'm afraid I have to say that Chris is going to win. Yeah, I think so. But, it should be a good match nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, this match is going to be sick. So, you've got Joy Janela, who's the rebel of AEW, I'm assuming. She's going to be taking on fucking Lance Archer. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm really looking forward to this. I, you know, as much as we talk about Brian Cage being this absolute rocking machine, you can easily say the same thing for Archer. Okay. Now, I mean, when Archer was in Japan and he was partnered with uh, Davey Boy Smith Jr., they were a great team, you know, the Killer Elite Squad. Very good tag team. I think if they held the IWGP heavyweight tag titles, and they were really, really good in Japan, then Archer comes over to AEW, and you know he is, you know this takes no prisoners, beat the living shit out of you, don't give a fuck who you are and all this other stuff and you know like you said Joey Janela is the rebel he's the bad boy he he doesn't care about his own body he'll do whatever it takes and you know it should be a very very good match Archer though that guy is Ooh, boy, he's a, he's a beast. Fuck. And if Janela can stand a chance, it could go for a little while, but... He, takes one, all it takes is one yeah. blackout. All it takes is one blackout. You know, and you got the best of the best in the corner, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. So... I, yeah, you know what? I'm going to state the obvious and say that my boy Lance is going to win. I mean, I'd say for sure Archer will win. Anything else you wanted to add about this match? 
So now we go on the six man take team. You've got the Dark Order versus SCU. Yeah. And these guys definitely, we talk about veterans in the professional wrestling world. Oh. You've got Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels who wrestled in TNA. They wrestled in Ring of Honor with Scorpio Sky. Coming at CU, and then now they're in AEW. Yeah. So now you have these guys, and uh, again, I was going to say Luke Harper, but Brody Lee, Brody. and Stu Grayson, and I can't remember who else is going to be there. But yeah. the Dark Order, anyway, you know, these guys definitely. You got Uno and Grayson from Smash. These guys definitely are one of the best tag teams in professional wrestling today. But you got Brody Lee, who's definitely a good leader, and yeah, he can take these guys to know like and and nothing imaginable. I guess I I don't know what else to say. Right. But. If I were to guess, as much as I like SCU, I don't know if they can have what it takes, even as veterans, to take out the Dark Order. Yeah. I mean, here's one thing that I've noticed. You have two Grayson and Evil from Smash. They, they're kind of like the one really, who started this whole Dark Order. Stu Grayson, he is the one that wrestles regularly. Right. Uno, I think, is mainly the spokesman for the Dark Order. He's the one that tries to recruit people to the Dark Order, and it's like, Udo is Brody's right hand man, if you will. Right. Brody and Evil give orders to Evil Udo, but Evil Udo will go in 
to recruit whoever they want at the dark border. Yeah. Well, the bad, uh, Christopher Daniels, several others. And, you know, Bernie Lee is like the leader of the dark order. He's the assaulted one. Mm -hmm. And his character right now is actually very, very good. It's like I said, when we did a video there a while ago, he's the intelligent mastermind of the Dark Order. And, like, aside from that, and the internet, he's the monster that updates his hell and beats the crap out of him. Right, yes. And, and then, Whoever third person of the Dark Order will be, uh, yeah. I think the guy has to be. Yeah. Frederick does the business. Christopher Daniels has wrestled for over 20 years. Frank Yetzer is up there and here himself. Scorpio's guys. An established Frederick? I don't think he has a whole lot of years under his belt. No. But, you know, he's a established better himself. Yeah. I would agree, though, that I think there's going to be something up the dark order's sleeve to where they get the win and that match. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's going to be a good match regardless. So now the last match we have, we've got the Buffalo Boys, the Butcher and the Blade, Lucha Brothers, they're going to take on FTR and the Young Bucks. So, so. yeah. Talk to uh, a little bit about the Lucha Brothers. Is there a rivalry with Santander or Santander and Ortiz? Yeah. They are a really good tag team. They are hot running. They get to do it all. They themselves were big pop tag team champions. Then, of course, you got the Bakugo Boys, Bunch of the Bunny, Last Guys, that take over to AEW. They done fairly well. In AEW right now. They're on their way to some point down the road getting a shot at the tag titles. They just still got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the Young Fun. Very established tag team. Very well known tag team. Wrestled in Red of Honor, wrestled for quite a while in Japan, and they are easily among the best tag teams in the world, and the business. Yeah. And of course, you've got FGI, the Revival Brothers, WWE days. Again, very established tag team, very good tag team. They seem to have hit a down, downward spiral in the later last, of course, yes, of the WWE run before heading over to AEW. And it's nice to see that they were able to keep their finisher close. Now, I don't know if they still call it Saturday season, I probably still do, but yes, there's that. Mm -hmm. And at least three of these four tag teams, at some point in their career, were tag team champions. Of course, you mentioned the Lucha Brothers being impact tag team champions, the Young Bucks held the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles. Of course, they held the Ring of Honor Tag Titles. 
and they held the intergender tag titles in uh, Arrested Gorilla yep. and I'm sure probably other tag titles and other promotions they were in. Of course, FDR held the NXT tag team titles, the Raw tag team titles, and the SmackDown. I think the SmackDown tag titles as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think that this is going to be a good match, like you said. But yeah. One of the, you know, a lot of these take teams were great. Yeah. I, hmm, I think FTR have to prove themselves in AEW. It's unfortunate yeah. what that happened with them in WWE. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Young Bucks as always. The Buffalo Boys, I think. Unfortunately, they don't have Ali no more. Yeah, she seems to be. Oh, hunky dory, lovey dovey, crossing on uh, Duty Marshall for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got the Lucha Brothers, Bush with the Blade, FTR, and Young Bucks. Should be a good match. It'll be chaotic, I'm sure. Just all over the place. Physical, brawling, high. So on so close. Who's going to win? Ooh. Yeah. You know, like you said, FTR still got a lot to prove in AEW. The Young Bucks, there's, you can't go around with those guys. The Lucha Brothers and uh, Sports of the Blade. Lucha Brothers have done, or Kurt Bucks does quite well. Unfortunately, are, are there are still going to let away the yet? So, I mean, take a guess, you're more than likely what they're right. Because, I mean, they are just starting this rivalry with FTR and Fortress Blade. I'm sure at some point. It'll also kind of catch up. Uh, it seems to be continuing a rivalry with the Luke Brothers and the Young Bucks. So, should be a good match. But I'm sure the big winner of the match will be the fans. Yeah, I would think so. So, this has been. Kyle and I back together. The band's back together, motherfuckers. Hell yeah. Yeah. So next week, we're going to be back in our Wheels of Fury premiere when we do Extreme Worlds. Extreme Worlds. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. I have no idea what's in store. I know two matches so far, but yeah, this has been great. So, for me and Matt, we got Killer Kyle. Yeah. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.